All right, real talk. Are you majoring in the minors? What's up, Rafael Cortez back on the Entrepreneur Mindset uh, series. Let's have a real conversation about what goes on in an entrepreneur's head uh, whenever we feel a little bit stagnant, okay? Before I do that, I'm gonna ask you to please subscribe, like, and share if you like the content that we're putting out for you every single week. Now, let's talk about mindset, right? Let's talk about mindset. Let's have a real conversation about the, uh, the mindset of an entrepreneur, the doubts and the worries and everything that happens inside our head as we're building up these uh, businesses, right? The, these uh, platforms uh, for dreams and achievement and, and wealth and, and freedom. This six inch space between your ears can, you know, turn into a very dark place every now and then. So I want to have a real talk about that and then just kind of highlight uh, the important internal conversations that might be going on in your head All right so i was sitting down with a with a good friend of mine about four or five days ago and we were going over uh projections we're about you know to jump into this uh this seminar that's happening it's a three-day seminar and you know we're looking at the lineup and then potential points of improvement and then just going through the whole model looking at the uh, the guests that we're going to be on there and what happened inevitably, because we started looking at the um, like the profiles of each one of the people that were going to be in that uh, in that uh, seminar, right? We started diving into um, their track record. We started diving into oh, this person has been in year uh, in business for ten years, uh, and they've done this, 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 and that, and now they're here. Like this is happening. So next thing you know, a thirty minute conversation and the achievement of others. I mean, we were not we were not hating on it by any means. We were mesmerized right by the uh, by the level of think that these uh, these uh, individuals have uh, so we started with that and then we jumped into you know what happens at a, at a mastermind level uh, whenever you're meeting up with people like this on a regular basis what happens then and uh, how it all kind of gets um, you know your, your whole mindset the whole perspective of how you look at things so how you see the world your whole perspective just changes right and starts to get um, you know, a little bit more ambitious, uh, you know, for, for lack of a better term, uh, in terms of achievement. Okay. I, you know, I want to do this. This person is doing this. So now I understand that this is possible. And you start putting pieces together, adding, you know, one plus one and whatnot. Um, and then you end up with, with, um, bigger dreams, bigger visions of achievement, bigger goals. Uh, but you also end up with that void that's between you and those goals, those dreams, all right? So, I mean, it, the gap is, is subjective, right? It, it's gonna depend, you know, on where you're at right now and then what that bigger thinking looks like. Um, but I'm telling you, every time I dive into one of these conversations and I start looking at the, um, um, not necessarily comparison between me and others, but at the possibilities that can be crafted, that void gets big, right? And that's uncomfortable. Um, and then I ask myself the question, okay, what's keeping me in this, you know, space? Why am I not able to just catapult myself over to that next level and then make shit happen that way? Um, and you know, what's the reason behind it? At the end of the day, it, the problem with looking at what everybody else is doing, um, although it, it's very constructive, right? Uh, from a perspective standpoint, uh, you know, gives you ideas, gives you a uh, potential of, of things that you can, you know, tap into, aim for and, and look forward to. Um, it can also create that void. And what that void is, it's, it's a need. It's a need for more results. So, so the, uh, the comment was dropped, like right in the middle of that conversation. Uh, it turns to me and looks at me and says, bro, we're majoring in the minors. We are majoring in the minors. We're spending so much time uh, and effort and fine tuning the same stuff that we've been working on for years. And, and now we're, we're major league players in the minors. So we're majoring in the minors. I mean, that resonated, that had some weight and I felt it when it landed, right? Now, why do we major in the minors? Um, inevitably, after you do something over and over and over again, although it may be a big thing for the general population, for you it becomes a, a comfort zone, okay? So when you get stuck in this comfort zone and doing the same thing over, over and over again, uh, you start to get really, really good at it and next thing you're a pro but you're in the you're a pro in the same space uh, not that it's a bad thing if that's where you want to stay but if you're creating that void uh, and you're still majoring in the minors 
it's a problem. Now you have a duality, right? You have a duality, you have an internal a battle going on between where you want to get to and what you're comfortable with. Understanding that to me was a total, total epiphany. Okay. Understanding that, wow, I'm, I'm spending so much time here, yet I'm creating this void of uh, results that I want. So the next part of that conversation, which is really what I want to put out here for you guys, uh, was, you know, how do you level it up? How do you stop majoring in the minors and then go for the for the big stuff. Well, after sitting with it for a while, I figured out that it comes down to uh, to a couple of different things. The first one is um, we can be we can become very, very results oriented. Right. When we start an entrepreneurship, when we begin as entrepreneurs, um, we were looking. Yeah, we are looking for results. But what's really driving us is a sense of achievement. It's a sense of wanting to be more so we can do more. Uh, but it's that sense of achievement. And, and I think that uh, as time progresses and we get successful in the businesses and things you know, start to pan out, we forget a little bit about that sense of achievement, that need for achievement. And then we start settling uh, as weird, as crazy as it sounds. Right. We start settling for results. Um, and, and that can be, you know, that can be a problem. Again, if you're creating that void for bigger, bigger results. So bringing it back and lighting that fire of achievement again, uh, achievement and contribution. Why? Because we can because we can that's gonna that's what's gonna light us up again right so if you feel like you're majoring in the minors and you're kind of stagnant but you're thirsty for more you want more results and now you've created a void of stuff that you want to you know achieve and, and then uh you goals that you want to accomplish an impact that's a lot bigger than you that you want to make uh, you have to bring it back to that sense of achievement light up that uh, dial up that uh, achievement uh, factor that you have inside of you and bring it up to the next level it's going to be the first one the second one gets more pragmatic right this is where you actually start doing things put yourself in masterminds put yourself in rooms uh, where you're going to have to pay sometimes, right? To put yourself in a room with people who are performing, who, I mean, they've already created that void and surpassed it with results. So, I mean, they're well beyond that. Find rooms like that. That's really, um, it's not an expense, okay? I cannot emphasize how not an expense that is. It's an investment. It's an investment in yourself. Um, a lot of the, like the, the regular stigma of, of masterminds, especially the type of mastermind that's out there. Now, be careful, like, do some, research and homework on the type of mastermind that you're going to join um, but I'm a huge advocate for masterminds because people who want to level up they find themselves in these rooms why because they know they're not going to be the smartest person in that room you're putting yourself in a room full of elite people who are really good at their craft you're going to be really good at one craft maybe two or three I don't know uh, but they are going to also going to be really good at other stuff that you're not good at right so it's a complementary effort it's a complementary thing if you have to pay to put yourself in a room like that do it it's not um and you can afford it right i mean i'm not saying you know sell your children to put yourself in a mastermind it's not how it works um but if you're in that space where you can come in and then you can actually you know pay into your own growth and development masterminds are a great place to do it you get context uh, from the people who are performing, right? From the people who are actually having results. You get perspective, you, you get a bigger sense of think, uh, and you get exposed to the possibilities. Now, one thing that works like a charm never fails, and it's been true since kindergarten, it's gonna be peer pressure. When you become friends with people who are performers, who are doers, who are at the tip of the sphere in their industries, um, you have that internal pressure, that internal motivation to do better. Uh, why? Because it's, it's you're part of the peer group now. Uh, it's it's just part of it, right? So find ways to keep that drive up. To me, being in masterminds is one of them. And again, you have to be very particular about the masterminds that you're in. If there's some, if it's a mastermind where only I'm contributing value to, uh, it's not my setting. It's not allowing me to br uh, to grow, right? So I want to be the dumbest guy in the room if possible. Uh, and that's the type of mastermind that I'm going to look out for. It's going to be completely uncomfortable. It's not going to feel right. Um, if you if you walk in there and you have that sensation of like, wow, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing in this room. Uh, I don't know how to bring value to these people. Trust me, there are multiple ways of doing it, uh, but it's the right room. More importantly, it's going to be the right room. So if you're majoring in the minors, you have to put yourself in the major leagues one way or the other. The first way to do it is through a mastermind group. Um, Grow, it's going to help you grow out of your space. Grow out of your space, the space that you're used to, the, the space that you're comfortable performing in. Um, now, this is a twofold benefit. You're going to get new perspective, new context on new things, and the results that you're used to having, 
they're, they're also going to grow. They're also going to get a lot better because you're just becoming that much better. So you're becoming that much of a better leader for your company. You're becoming that much of a better leader for your, your family, your friends, and everybody around you, right? So your results and anything that you have right now are going to level up just like you are. Now, when you're around people who play in the major leagues, offer to collaborate, okay? Somehow, some way, there's going to be some value that you can bring to the table. It might feel uncomfortable. You might feel like you don't want to do it. Like you don't want to put your foot forward because you might fail. Uh, if that's the case, that's a good flag, okay? It's a good green flag to do it anyways. Uh, it's putting you out of your comfort zone. And if you're, again, majoring in the minors, that's how you get to the next level. By collaborating with people who've already gone through the process, who've already dug the trench and done the work, okay? So that's how you do it. And be loud about the stuff that you need and be loud about your capabilities, about the stuff that you can do for others. Um, there's not going to be any growth, any progress, or any movement forward unless you're loud about you unless you're loud about you all right so this is this is kind of what i took away from that one little comment bro we're majoring in the minors and and it just lingered right it felt heavy on me i don't want to major in the minors fuck that i want to play in the major leagues how do i do that how do i find out where the major leagues are at these are the actions that you have to take Right. I hope you like that. If you like the videos that I'm putting out there for you every single week, please subscribe, like, and share. Help me reach more entrepreneurs like us, okay? Help me spread the love. And I want to hear what you got to say, all right? Drop it in the comments below and let's have a conversation. Stay focused. You got this.